we sat down and I started talking to him about what he was in there for. And he told me that um, under the influence of some hallucinated drugs that were given to him by a witch doctor, he then and his wife killed their four children. Before we get to that, then, the, the one that I must be thinking of is the, the man that killed his... You know what I'm going to yep, say. Can, yep. you, can you tell us a bit about him? So I'm, um, we're always looking to meet and talk to interesting people. I say interesting people, people that have committed crimes. Um, and then I hear about this individual who done some despicable crimes. Didn't know what they were. I was just told that he'd uh, generated a lot of publicity in a country that doesn't normally write about these sort of things. So I asked to meet him. The um, prison guard said to me a day later or something, he'd be up. For talking to you so off I went to meet this guy didn't know what he was in for so I then sit down outside the cell of this prisoner who comes he's got very shifty eyes so I, I couldn't look him in the eye and read him mm. it was a bit harder than, than, than normal we sat down and I started talking to him about what he was in there for and he told me that um, under the influence of some hallucinated drugs that he took that were given to him by a witch doctor he then and his wife killed their four children they um, four small kids, so I think the smallest was two years old, the oldest oh. was 12 years old. They killed all four of their children. Um, what was not mentioned in the film was that they also cut the hearts out of these kids and buried them separately. Oh, my God. He hadn't been convicted, so I'm going to say, as a disclaimer, you know, he's innocent until proven guilty, although he admits what he did, what his defence is, that he did this under the influence of a witch doctor. Now... Why I'm not comfortable with what he has to say is because he committed these crimes, buried the bodies of his kid, hid the hearts of his kids, and then continued living his life for the next four months. And it was only because it wasn't like he was caught overnight and now regrets it because the drugs have worn off. He tried to conceal, as did his wife, for the next four months. And it was only because the local villagers in the village that he came from in this remote part of the world started to smell death. And so they were then asking, where are your kids? We haven't seen your kids for a long time. They kept fobbing them off, saying that they were, you know, away with relatives. And then, lo and behold, they then brought in the village police who then searched their farm and found the bodies of these kids. And they said that they did it because... And, and, and again, I put this in there. These people do come from a world where they believe in witchcraft in the mm. same way that people here believe in Christianity or, 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 or other religions, you mm. know. So they believe in witchcraft and... I just couldn't believe why he was telling me he was prepared to kill his kids because it was going to bring him wealth and fortune. So replacing your kids for money, killing your kids for money, it was just shocking. You, it, it was horrible. Do you think the witchcraft stuff holds up in court there as well? It does. So, it, so it, it, it there does. is a chance that he would actually get... If, if he can prove, if his lawyers can prove that he had taken the drug that then made him act... Um, out of character or whatever. And that's putting it, it lightly. Yeah, Fucking hell. Th then the chances are that, because it's it's been known, other people have. Just before we finish, I, I want to quickly talk about the guy in Mauritius. Yeah. Um, the only time in the in the series that I watched where you tell the cameras to cut is quite a quite a big moment. Um, you also, I think you'd learnt just before you met him what his crimes were, because um, you, you mentioned in this interview that sometimes when they were terrible crimes, you'd learn you'd learn of that beforehand just to give you a little bit of a run up. And uh, you made it clear you didn't want to touch him, didn't want to touch, shake his hand. For it, 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 it what was that? What was that whole th thing like? What was his crimes? I, I, I think the rape is the, the 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 thing. I don't want to shake the hand of a man who has deliberately gone out and, and violated a woman or a man and committed these rapes. I, 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 I don't, I, I just, I feel uncomfortable in, in that situation. So that's the reason I won't shake somebody's hand if I know that they're already in horrendous crime. It might sound weird to people to think, well, you'll shake the hand of a murderer or a thief. And in my opinion, that's just as bad, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But look, we've all got our, our thing, haven't we? And that's mm. my, that's my thing. I feel like I've, not I that I've been enough. raped. I, I don't know anybody in my family that has been raped or gone through it. So it's not coming mm. from a place of, um, experience, mm. it's coming from a place that it just makes me feel uncomfortable to shake the hand of a rapist knowing what they've, they've done. So yeah. I kind of try and make a rule there. Sometimes I have and I didn't know. Brazil is where I learnt my lesson. This guy covered me in mud. If you haven't seen the Brazil episode, you've got to. I get covered in, in mud by this guy. I'm down on... I've just got my boxer shorts on for all those ladies out there. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've got my boxer shorts on. This guy covers me in mud. I will come back to your guy, but he covers mm. me in mud. Right. So we're doing this ritual. I call it the Amazon ritual. Covers me in mud from head to toe. Makes me look like Shrek, someone said. But I'm covered in head to toe mud. And then I cover him in head to toe. 
I don't know what he's in for. And then I find out he's a fucking serial rapist. And I feel so <sighs> uncomfortable knowing that. And I don't let men touch my body. Yeah. You know, I've never let a man touch my body, to be honest. But here is a man for the first time, beyond a massage therapist, touching my body from head to toe. And then I find out he's a rapist. It made me feel so uncomfortable. Mm. So I wouldn't take, um, shake the hand of this individual in, in this, this prison because of the nature of the crimes that he committed. And so when I'm in the cell and I'm interviewing this guy, it's quite clear from, from the get-go that he's a disturbed character. It's quite clear that he's on medication because it's all round his cell and he behaves in such a shifty way. It was quite a, an intimidating, uncomfortable situation. So then I've got to sit down and try and draw this out without um, judging him, if you like. I've already judged him in the sense that I know what he's in. So I do this interview and I talk to you about wanting to kind of go for the neck or to prep myself because we sit that close, closer than what you and I are now. And there's nothing between us. There's no guards there, although there was a guard in this particular. And then we have the conversation. And I just think it was the... The darkness of the detail, without any remorse, without any facial expressions, that may have been the medication, you know, that was controlling. He, it, was, you know, it was often flicking the tongue, his eyes were kind of moving, and I just felt more and more uncomfortable because I was asking more and more tougher questions to him, if you like, mm. that I felt that he was feeling uncomfortable. And I think nearing the end of the interview, he was starting to behave in a way where... You couldn't see it off camera. Um, and then I think the camera panned to me because he was behaving in a way where he weren't answering my questions anymore. And he was looking at me like you're looking at me now, Jack, with that kind of shock horror. And I thought, we need to cut this. And that's why you thought I thought he'd flip it. out. He didn't, but he, he, he was shuffling in his chair a lot more than he was at the, at the beginning of the interview. And that's because I, I was, you know, pushing him. He, you know, it's not often you sit down with a person in any crime and they tell you they destroyed a woman yeah when they killed them i mean there's one thing to sort of say i killed them i shot them i strangled them and they give you that detail and that in itself is not nice to hear no but use the word destroy and then talk about sodomy how the other guys in, in such a bland way uh, and then blame it on your mental state which is acceptable if that's the case because i wouldn't you know but i imagine sometimes they use it as a get out of jail free card that's what i felt about him yeah Really, I do. I think he 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 was diagnosed with with this condition while he was in prison. I think it's a condition. I'm no therapist, but I do think, based on the conversation I had with him and the guards after and other prisoners, I do think it's something that has manifested itself more since he's been in prison than what it was on the outside. Maybe it was managed on the outside because he was free and he wasn't cocooned in this space in prison it did manifest itself, which is why he was in, boy, I'm, I, I can't, the, the prison that he was in was so locked up. You know, it was like this, it was like, uh, I, I, I can't even describe it. It was like walls and then walls and then walls and then walls <sighs> and then the cell block. And there was like a handful of prisoners in there who were deemed to be Mauritius most dangerous. This prison had been closed down and they reopened it. Wall, wall, think about it, wall, 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 and then cell block. And he was in there. So, and it took some to get into him, going through these cages and going into his cell to meet him. So that gives you a sense of how ruthless and dangerous he he was um but i do think that his psychotic behavior manifest in prison because he was in that space not because of the crimes he committed initially but because of the crimes he committed whilst he's been in prison mm. that's why he was taken out of the normal population the hard one that we were in to this other one wow what a what a, what a monster 